Good luck. All right, Washington State University, how are we doing? All right, can I get a Goku's? Hey, I like the energy. So guys, uh, my name is Jared Barnes. I understand that it's a Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Some of you just got out of practice. We were watching you guys. Some of you may have come from all the way across campus. It's the second day, first day of class, and there's so many things going on. But tonight, we want to engage in an intentional conversation. We came from Los Angeles. Trayvon came from Albuquerque to have an intentional message about you guys, about where you're at right now. It's such a unique place here at Washington State University in Pullman, Washington. You may have never thought you were here, but you're here for a reason. Each of you have a specific purpose for being here. Tonight, we're going to talk about that. What is that purpose? How can I find that? How can I own that role that I have right now? How can I help others? How can I lead? All these different questions that may sound simple on the surface, but not always in your textbook. You can't always find a way. You can't always Google, you know, how do I influence my teammate like that? How do I bring someone along with me? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. With that, it's going to require some energy, some participation for you. We built in a few questions. We've got a little game going on. We want to make this very intentional, uh, fun for you guys, but at the same time, impactful. So go ahead and scroll. Just to open our conversations, first shout out to the women's soccer team. We've been following you guys. We got, yeah, yeah, we've been following you guys. We've got pictures of all your teams. But first, wanted to really introduce ourselves. I know my name is Jared Barnes. This is Trayvon Briggs. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Trayvon. Trayvon Briggs. Hey, shout out to Trayvon. Trayvon, that's what I'm talking about. Former student athlete, Cal Berkeley, then transferred to New Mexico. We both played football. Uh, but guys, we both had a dream. We both had a dream. We wanted to put this slide of just who we are and what is, what is prime you. And we're going to talk about leadership tonight. We're going to talk about where you want to go. And we put this slide up because it's, it's simple, right? It's simple. Three years ago, I was in my, my apartment. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm tired of being average. I'm tired of just going through life. Like, I want to do something more. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I want to do something more. And we just started. We started this movement called Prime You of helping others reach their prime. And so tonight, this may feel like a lot of things, but at the end of the day, it's up to you to just start. Just start. So go ahead and scroll. Real quick, wanted to show some proof in the pudding. This is Trayvon. I don't know. How many of you guys think Trayvon made this tackle? He's number 13. I don't know. I, it's a little suspect. It's like, I don't know. That's my guy, though. Y'all got to know. That's my guy. I'm kidding. He made the tackle. Uh, like Pat Chun said, I, I played football at Ohio State. Incredible experiences. But again, tonight is about you guys. Just want to give you some background. So again, what are we going to talk about? Go ahead and scroll. What are we going to talk about? First, guys, this energy that we're going to ask for, energy that you guys display on a day-to-day -day basis, on your teams, in the classroom, oftentimes it's determined by your expectation. It's determined by your expectation. You expect to have a great college experience. I promise you, you're going to bring some energy to that. You expect to have a winning season. You expect to make a change. You expect to leave a legacy on this campus. I promise you, you're going to bring some energy, some focus, some intentionality to that. These next 45 minutes, you expect to get something out of it. I promise you, you're going to get something out of it. But I, I, I'm so serious, though. Energy is contagious. We were out there greeting you guys at the door for a reason. We want to set that expectation. That, man, something, something's going to happen. Well, there's going to be a shift tonight. It's going to be a little bit different than before. Go ahead and scroll. So really, what are we talking about? To give you guys some context. First, we're going to talk about who we are, you as individuals. But also, we're going to talk about who we are not. And when you know who you are, it's very, very clear to who you are not. It's very much more clear to eliminate things that are crowding your, your, your vision to eliminate the, the, the cloudiness, the clutter, all these different distractions, whether it's social media, things going on with your things that, that, that don't really matter. When you know who you are, you can eliminate that. Two, what is our role and purpose here? What is it that we really want to get out of here? Then we're going to talk about a framework to strengthen our teams and solidify what it is we're trying to do. And then lastly, why all this matters? Why does it matter? And, and what can I do to create that change? So go ahead and scroll. So we said this is going to be interactive. This is not going to be a lecture. This isn't a class. We got a little game for you guys. We're going to talk about teams. We're going to talk about some great teams. I want you guys to make some noise. We got this game called Squad versus Squad. I want you guys to make some noise for your favorite team. We got four rounds. Round one. Here you go. Make some noise for your favorite team. Matchup number one. Make some noise for the Avengers, man. Who here? Make some noise for the Avengers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
We had the early birds over here. Somebody, hey, somebody was early. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, I like, I like my man Captain America. Like, he's just a leader. Like, I like him. And then you got Black Panther here. He like, come on, man. Yeah, we're well, kind of forever. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, though. Bring it back. Make some noise for the Justice League. Ooh. All right. Okay. Okay. Who, who you like? Who you like at the Justice League? Who's your Who's your guy or or lady? Batman. Batman. You like Batman? I feel like he's not a real superhero though. I mean, is Batman a real superhero? Like. Okay. 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 That was a good first matchup. Good first matchup. I think that's fair. Go ahead and scroll. Go ahead and scroll. Matchup number two. Ooh. Ooh. Make some noise for NWA. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, I mean, I lived in Atlanta. I spent some time in Atlanta. Make some noise for the Migos. Okay, okay. okay. I feel like that was the NWA. I feel like that's NWA. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Ice Cube, I wouldn't mess with Ice Cube. That's all I know. That's us. Go ahead and scroll. Go ahead and scroll. Ooh, okay. We're going to throw it back to the 90s. Anybody born in the 90s? Make some noise for the Goonies. Yeah. How about, how about 11 and the crew from Stranger Things? Okay, we got, we got one. We got one. The Goonies, the Goonies, I love how they banded together. The Goonies banded together. I feel like, uh, I feel like Eleven put the team on her back one too many times, you know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, one too many times. Go ahead and scroll. Go ahead and scroll. All right. This is a, this is a real question now. This is a real... Who, who is the better team? Make some noise for the women's national team. <laughs> WNBA All-Stars, make some noise. Yeah. Okay, okay. I think that's a good matchup. Good matchup. La- hey, listen up, listen up. Last matchup here. This is a big one. We need to know. We need to know. Last matchup. Ooh. Ooh. I, I mean, do we even need to do this? Like, I mean, the pup, it, it's, that's a cute puppy, though. I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to be real. I think he's in trouble, though. That cooler look like he's, he, he's on a mission. He's on a mission. Go ahead and scroll. So the whole point, right? The whole point. Guys, listen up. Listen up. I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to miss it. The whole point now. Who do you want on your squad? Who do you want on your squad? It's Cougs versus everybody, but who? no, no, no. Who do you want on your squad? And how are you going to lead them? Well, it's easy. It's easy to talk about everybody else's team. It's easy. Oh, I like them. I like that team. That's a good team. Oh, no, no, no. I like them instead. What about you? What about you as a leader? You as an individual? Whether you're a freshman and you just got here, this is your second day on campus, or you're a senior, and this is year four or year five if you're redshirted, and you've been here for a while. Who do you want on your squad? Rhetorical question, just to start the conversation. Go ahead and scroll. So, one, we told you we've been following you guys. We told you we've been following you guys. If we're really going to talk about the power of the pack, right? Listen up, listen up. We're really going to talk about the power of the pack and defining success and creating a great team, and leaving a legacy, and having that sense of belonging that, man, I'm part of something special here at Washington State. Go ahead and scroll. First, you have to define what that success is. For me as an athlete, and Trey Wan can echo this, man, my whole life, all I wanted to do was make my coach happy. Man, if I could just get coaches' attention. If they can just say, man, great job. If they just notice me, man, I'll be great. Here's the thing. I got it, and I still felt empty inside. I never took the time to define success for myself. I never really understood. I was just kind of going through the motions, just saying yes to everyone, yes to everything, and, and next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the class, the practice, to the game, the class, the practice, to the game. And I kept saying yes to everyone else, but no to myself. I never took the time to define that success. Keep going. And guys, before we win, before we really talk about winning, what that looks like, we have to figure out what can cause us to fail, what can, what can trip us up along that way. Go ahead and scroll. Keep going, keep going. Right there. So a lot of times our habits, right, these things that we do day in, day out, day in and day out, if we're not aware of them, we don't take time to pause and think about what it is we're actually thinking about. A lot of times those habits can control us and we don't control them. You're like, Jared, whoa, that's, that's deep. What do you mean by that? You ever caught yourself just scrolling on your phone and you're just scrolling? You don't even know why you're scrolling. You're just scrolling. It's like 30 minutes past. You're like, whoa, what just happened? Like you, you don't even know. Like, I was like, wow, like, what was I even doing? It's an impulse. It's a habit that sometimes can control you without even, even realizing. So real quick here, I wanted to put a graph up. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. The Dunning-Kruger effect. 
when you enter a new environment, when you start a new season, it's a new year, new team, new expectations. A lot of times we have this high level of confidence, right? We're hype, like, yeah, it's 2019. I'm here now. This is my time. But we may not know a whole lot. We may not have a whole lot of wisdom or knowledge and experience about what we're going to go through this year. We may not. And so from a mathematical perspective, those math majors in the room, we would be at the peak of Mount Stupid. Some of you guys may feel that way. You may not know it. And something, something may happen along the way. Your, your playing time goes down. You fail an exam. You have a breakup with a significant other. Something may happen. Coach is coming at you crazy. You're like, man, this is just stressing me out. I can't even do it anymore. We find ourselves in this valley of despair, this valley of despair. Like, yo, I don't even know. I don't even know why I'm here anymore. I don't even like the color red. I, I like the color blue. Right? You start questioning all these things that you thought you were so confident in. And now all of a sudden it's like, I don't even I don't even know if this is for me anymore. Like, yeesh. But here's the thing. Over time, over time, when you're part of something special, you have people who bring you out of that. You have people who can help lift you and you can rise above where we get into this slope of enlightenment and this plateau of sustainability that sounds so wonderful. But it takes time. It takes intentionality. It takes exactly what we're going to do in these next 40 minutes as we go through this. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So when I hit a story, I'm a big history buff. I'm a big history buff. This is way back. French and Indian War, 1754. There was a battle called the Battle of Fort Necessity. Battle of Fort Necessity. It took place in Virginia. And in this battle, there was a young, young general. This general was like top of his class. He was like that dude coming out of the military. He got promoted um, to command this, this regiment here in the Battle of Fort Necessity. He, but here's the thing. He built the fort at the bottom of a valley. He built it. He was like, no, nah, we're good. I'm good. I don't need anybody's help. We're going to build this fort. We're going to win uh, this war. We're going to win this battle and win the war. I'm like, OK, hey, that's what you need to do. Cool. Respect. Next thing you know, the day of the battle, because, again, they built this fort at the bottom of the valley. The day of the battle, it pours rain. It pours rain and the fort gets flooded. And all of a sudden, their guns don't work and they're flooded. They're slipping all over the place. They end up having to surrender and lose the battle. And that general was stripped of his rank. He was sent back from general all the way down to lieutenant and had to work his way back up in the military. Guys, that general was George Washington, our first president of the United States. And so while you may think you know, you may know it all, what overconfidence is, is refusing to think about what you're not seeing, what you're not seeing. Some of you know what, Jared, I'm good. I got this. I know what I'm doing. OK, OK. Maybe tonight we think about what we're not seeing about ourselves, about our teams, about our role. Why? Because go ahead and scroll. Sometimes we overvalue what we are not. We, we think about so much what we don't have and we neglect what we do have. Regardless, if you're a freshman, you're a starter, you're a walk on. Guys, I started as a walk on. I'll tell a little bit more about my story. I started as a walk on. Regardless of your role, we each have an opportunity. Why? Because we, if we focus on winning at the right things, winning at the right things, things that matter, things that can make a difference, that's what gives us a chance. But with that, though, winning at the right things, being focused, sometimes you got to disappoint the right people. Sometimes I'm like, we're, we're operating at different frequencies right now. We're just we're not on the same level. I had the chance to play football at Ohio State. I was born and raised in the city of Columbus, Ohio. I went back to my hometown to play. All my friends, my, my boys that I went to high school with, they were excited for me. They wanted to come hang out at the facility all the time. And I'm like, sorry, y'all. I can't. It's nothing against you, but where I'm trying to go, I can't have those old habits, those old routines. I, I can't have you pulling back where I'm trying to go pull forward. We're, we're operating on different frequencies. Again, so sometimes you have to make those hard choices, regardless if you just got here or you're on your way out. There's choices each and every one of you have to make on your journey. So go ahead and scroll. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. Oh, go back up. Go back up. Go back up. Yeah, right there. OK, we try to get the placement right. You know what I'm like? It's, it's all about the placement, the placement. And why am I so adamant about this? Why am I so adamant about this? And it would be a very serious part of the conversation. I know we're going to have fun tonight, but a serious part. Why? Because when you're not clear, when there's some type of confusion, it's that much easier to compromise. That much easier. Guys, if you, you have all these dreams and goals, whatever it is you want to do. But if you're not clear on exactly why you're here, exactly what you want to get out of this experience, it's that much easier to, to compromise and be like, ah, you know what? Okay, I guess, I guess I'll do it. I guess I'll just I'll go to this party or whatever it may be. 
that much easier to compromise. So that's why it's so, so important. So we said this is going to be interactive. I want you guys to talk about it, give you a little food for thought. I want you guys to turn to the person next to you. Turn to the person next to you, whether it's a group of two or three. Here's a question. Question number one. Question number one. What are some things you need to say no to? What are some things you need to say no to right now in 2019 in order to really get where you want to go? Take 30 seconds. Talk to your partner. Ten more seconds, ten more seconds. Go ahead and wrap it up, guys. Go ahead and wrap it up. Go ahead and wrap it up. In order to say yes to your dreams and goals, there are certain things you have to say no to, certain clutter, certain things that, you know what, I got to leave that behind. I got to leave that. That's, that's in the rearview mirror. I got to leave that behind in order to say yes to really what I want to say yes to. That makes sense? You follow what I'm saying? We on the same page? Keep going. Keep going. We're going to get into it now. We're going to get into it. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's not just about you. It's not. Some of you, you may have got here your freshman year expecting to play, super excited to be here, and then your red shirt or you have an injury. Something comes up. When I was a freshman, I got, I actually walked on, so I had to try out for the team, made the team, then redshirted. Like, whew, humbling. I'm going to practice all week, then watch the game from the sideline. Yikes. Yikes. It was ugly. Here's the thing. You know what, though? I got over myself. I got over what my personal agenda was. And, guys, you can't get over anything until you get over what you had in mind. This, this plan you have that's so great, this is what I want to do. Maybe what you want to do may not be best for us. How can we adapt that to find ways to really own your role on a team and be present on a team and participate on a team and be one with the team? Because, again, there is no I in team, right? But at the same time, you have to own you first. Go ahead and scroll. Keep going, keep going. Right there, right there. So, again, if we're really going to come together, right, as an institution, as an athletic department, you on your teams, you got to know your role and you got to own your role. Not just not just know it, not just know it, but truly own it. Because what happens when when you own something it's it's different, right? If you rent, you rent an apartment, right? Or you're renting, you know, you're just paying rent on a a dorm room. You're probably not going to take care of it like that. Like, ah, you know, I got a scuff on the wall. It's no big deal. But if you own something, you own it like, man, this I bought it. This is mine. I put a down payment on it. I paid the payment plan like that's mine. I own that. That is my name on it. You treat you probably treat it differently. You you probably treat a little differently. It's the same thing with our roles. Go ahead and scroll. Same thing with our roles. Keep going. Keep going right there. So there's this concept called the Pygmalion effect. And we think about our packs. We think about our teams. It's really an incubator. It's an incubator of all this energy that we put in every single day. Whether you come in to the locker room and you're just like, oh, yeah, this is something I got to do. It's another day. Or you, you really come in excited, like, hey, like I'm here today. It's an incubator of whatever you put in, you're likely going to get out. What the Pygmalion effect says is basically our actions or how we present ourselves, that's going to influence other people whether we realize it or not. Simply stated, eagles don't fly with pigeons. Eagles fly with other eagles. Cougars run with other cougars. Cougars are running with, with the house cat. That, that, that's, a different, that's a different lifestyle. And so understanding the energy that you put out, it influences your teammates, it influences your coaches, it influences the program every single day to really see beyond what we just see right here in ourselves. It starts with us, but it ends with others. Go ahead and scroll. And understanding, guys, what you feed, that will grow. It could be a negative attitude or a positive attitude. Either way, that's going to grow. So how, how, do, how do I understand my role? How do I really understand my role? Jared, I just got here. I'm a freshman. I'm not even sure what it is I, I need to do. 
except just do what coach says. And that's part of it. But first, one of the best things you can do is identify what it is you're good at, what it is you're best at. I know for me, playing, I played defensive back. I played corner and safety. So for me, I wasn't overly fast. I was like a four, four, five, four, six guy. But my technique, I was nice with the technique. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a bail, like all that. Nice. I knew my strengths. I knew what it was. I wasn't going to put myself in a losing situation. That's step one. You said you're going to take me deep? I don't know about that. I don't know, man. Hey, I'm retired, but I'm still dangerous now. I, don't, I got a pair of cleats in the car. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, man. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. That's step one. That's step one is identifying what it is you're good at. Step two now is identifying what, what does the team need? What does the team actually need? That takes a level of humility and a level of intentionality to seek that out. Coach, how can I best serve this team? What, what do we actually need as a, as a group instead of just worrying about yourself? Then third, third, now that's, this is a whole nother level. This is a whole nother level. It's not now just you. Who can I bring along with me? Who can I bring along with me? I'll never forget, I was at the University of Louisville, and I was going into my red shirt freshman year. I'd done everything the coach asked me to do. I showed up to meetings early. I studied the playbook. You know, I was like, man, I'm, this, is, this is my year. I did everything right, everything right. Coach pulled me to the side one day. He said, Jared, you do a great job, but you're not a leader. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean, coach? I do everything right. Everything you said, I, I, I was right. He said, you are, but you don't bring anyone along with you. It's just you who comes early to the meetings. He said, the next step is bringing somebody with you. That's the next step. That's the next, for you seniors, for you juniors, for you leaders in the room, who can you bring along with you? Who is it? Keep going. Keep going. So real quick, real quick, as we think, this is question number two. Question number two. Maybe you just got here. You've been here a while. Think about it, though. How can you best serve your team this season? And what does it look like for you to really own your role? To really own your role. Find someone next to you, 30 seconds, talk about it. Ten more seconds, ten more seconds. All right, go ahead and wrap it up. Go ahead and wrap it up. Wrap it up. How can you best serve the team, man? That's a, that's a hard, that can be a hard question. That can be a hard question. How can you best serve? Serve, action verb, serve, requires participation. Not necessarily an, something that just comes to you, but something that you do. And it comes from owning your role. And a lot of times, we talked about it last night with your SAC group. For those of you not in SAC, you should try to get in SAC. We talked about it last night. When you serve, sometimes it, it, it just widens your perspective. It makes you think about things that you may not have thought about before. Maybe serving your team is, is just checking in on your teammates, like, man, how you doing? Or, hey, how, how you doing? Coming in, greeting them in the locker room, like, man, I'm, I'm glad to see you today. Small things. Doesn't have to be life changing. Go ahead and scroll. So I want to do a quick activity. I want to do a quick activity for you guys. Everyone take out your phones real quick. Everyone take out your phones. Some of you already had them out anyway. So if you already had it out, it's okay. We, we're going to do an activity with your phones. But I want you guys to seriously think about this. Seriously think about this. Because service, again, it's, a, it's an action verb. There's some level of requirement to it. And there was a time during my career where I kind of reached my breaking point. I kind of reached my breaking point. I was a, I was a red shirt junior. I felt like I had finally got my moment to play. Long story short, I get a chance to, to, to get in a game on national television. And the third play I'm in, I give up a touchdown, 80 yards, deep ball. Coach pulled me out the game, didn't play the rest of the season. I was devastated. I was devastated. I felt like I had spent my entire life at the time. I was 20, 20, 21 years old. I felt like I had spent all my whole life working for this moment, and I blew it. I blew it. I was like, man, you know what? It's a wash. It's not even worth it. It's not even worth it, bro. 
So I had literally packed up my locker. I cleaned it out. I was going to go turn in my equipment, and I was going to quit the game of football. I was going to quit. And as I was packing up my locker, one of my teammates, Von Bell, in the middle right there with the blonde hair, who now he's the starting safety for the New Orleans Saints, he grabbed me by the shirt, and he said, Jared, what are you doing? I said, man, it's, it's not for me. I just I can't go anymore. He said, no, bro, you're worth it. You put in too much work. Take that stuff out that bag. You're going to show up to practice today. You're going to do a good job. Why? Because I know you're a good player. He said, you're too good of a player to quit on yourself. He said, you'll never let uh, yourself, for, you'll never forgive yourself for that. And that moment, that moment right there, one conversation, 30 seconds, changed my entire life. My entire life. We're going to have a great senior season that next year. End up having a, a chance to play in the NFL. Didn't pan out, but I had a chance. Changed my whole life. My whole life, one conversation. Why? Because somebody said, you're worth it to me. You're worth it. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't give up. You can't give up. You're worth it. You're worth it. Jawan, I want you to share a little bit about, about your son and, and who is worth it to you. <laughs> so this is my son. Uh, he's two years old. His name is Isaiah Briggs. Um, growing up, I had a lot of opportunities to own a lot of titles in life. Uh, former student athlete, uh, you know, being a son, being an older brother, um, all of the roles that I've had throughout my life, they've always came with some type of impact. They've always came with some type of test, you know, being just me and my mother, um, my sister while I was a sophomore year in college being born and trying to find a way to be back there and be that male figure in her life. Um, I had my son when I was actually a graduate assistant for the football team, working 15 plus hours a day, um, seven days a week, while also going to graduate school. And every single day, I had to really ask myself, how am I gonna make this happen? What am I gonna do? You know, I can't, I, I can't afford to be away from my son that much. I have too much passion. I love this football game, you know, but what am I going to do that's going to be able to balance whatever is going to be able to help me manage my time? And at the end of the day, I made the decision to bet on myself and take a different role, to, to upgrade my role as a father. Um, I get the opportunity every day to see this guy. You know, I'm an academic advisor now at the University of New Mexico. I can have this guy in an advisement appointment. As long as he's watching Elmo, he's all good. <laughs> I'm all good. I'm happy. I found my peace in that. But what it took was, it, it, it took a lot of strength. It took a lot of perseverance. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, it took a lot of faith. Because when I walked away from football, I'll be completely honest, I'm 27 years old. The first thing I asked myself was, what else can I do? I knew that I liked to impact kids. I knew that I liked to speak to student athletes. I knew that I liked to be in this realm, but how can I be in this realm to a point where I'm still effective in his life, in my role as a father, but also in everyone else. So take initiative. Take control of your role and understand it and live it out to the best. That is the most important part. It might not be what you see. It might not be what you feel at the time. But I'm telling you, if it's worthwhile, it's what you should do. I appreciate you sharing that, Trayvon. So we want to know. We want to know. We had you take your phones out for a reason. Want you to open, up, open up your photos. Open up your photos. I want you to screenshot, screenshot three, three, three people, three people in your photos who are worth it to you. We need to know three people. Take 30 seconds. Three people. Man, that's, you're worth it to me. You're worth it to me. Who's three people? If they're, if they're not in your photos, they're probably not worth it to you. I'm just being real. I'm just being real. We're going to, we got to, we got to eliminate that clarity right there. Three people. You're worth it to me. You're worth it to me. Take 30 seconds. Ten more seconds. Ten more seconds. You are worth it to me. Go ahead and wrap it up. Phones down. Phones down. Phones down. Phones down. We want to be intentional. We want to be intentional here. You're worth it to me. Guys, because when you know those people, when you know who's really on your squad, you know who's really there for you and you're really there for them, 
it becomes a whole lot easier, again, to eliminate that clutter, that, that cloudiness, all these different things going on. I'm like, no, that's, that's my guy. I'm here for him. I'm here for my son, whoever it may be, that family member, that teammate, that brother, that sister, that mother, that father, that cousin, that uncle, that aunt, whoever it may be. That I'm here for them. It gives you a sense of purpose that goes beyond you. Whenever you feel tired, like, man, I, just, I can't do it today. That's the time you need to think of that person who's worth it to you. Why? Because they're probably doing the exact same with you. Go ahead and scroll. So there's this question, right? We, a lot of times we face when there's expectations on us, when we want to achieve certain things. You get here, you may want to be a freshman All-American your first year. That's a, that's a heavy, heavy task. You may want to be the first one in your family to graduate. But with that comes this question like, man, am I good enough to actually do that? You just got named a starter. Am I good enough to actually keep this role that I'm trying to own in the process? Sometimes we got to manage those expectations. We got to figure out, OK, this is what I can commit to. This is what I can't. Go ahead and scroll. So, guys, understand that these silent battles, these battles that don't always show up every single day that you may not always see, but when you look in the mirror, you know you're going through a battle. Like, I'm going through right now. 18% of America, approximately 40 million people, struggle with what's called high-functioning anxiety. Or they, they struggle with anxiousness, but it doesn't really show up on any tests or anything. 40 million people now, 18% of the population. 18%, go ahead and scroll. In this culture we live in, this culture we live in, it's all about grind, 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 grind. Like, check me out on IG. I'm doing the footwork. I'm, I'm grinding right now. Like, yeah, check me out. Understand that this hustle culture sometimes can burn you out. You're just trying to keep up. You're just trying to keep up. Well, man, pretty soon you're going you to run out of steam on that. Understanding that, guys, sometimes more effort does not always equal more execution. It's not always about getting out there and, and working out and training and doing all. It, there's, that, that's the, that definitely a component. But exactly why we're here tonight, the other component, it's up here. It's up here. Being able to own that, have clarity, have intentionality about what you're doing instead of just ah, being all over the place. I'm a big fan of Floyd Mayweather. I'm not, I'm not into boxing like that, but I love some Floyd Mayweather. Like just the, the swag he kind of has. Like I'm a big fan. But here's the thing. Floyd Mayweather, if you ever watch him, he's so, boom, precise. He's so precise in his hits. So precise. I mean, the game of golf, I mean, you watch any pro, like real pro, like there's some real precision with that. I mean, that was a bad swing. I'm, I'm not no golfer like that. I mean, I still need to go to Top Golf to get the lessons, but there, there's some precision involved with, with the golf or with the, uh, the uh, it's intentional. He's, Floyd Mayweather's not out there just uh, like that. That's, that's what you do when you just, oh, yeah, I got to grind today. I got to grind. Let's grind. You're going to wear yourself out just trying to. Strategy, intentionality, clarity, all these things comes from reflecting on these points here. Keep going. Keep going. Why? And a lot of times when we have expectations, we talked about this with the SAC group. Sometimes we have a tendency to operate out of shame, to operate out of like, man, if I don't do this, I'm a bad person. <sighs> like, man, I showed up late. I'm, I'm, I'm not only am I a bad athlete, I'm a bad person. Where that pressure you may feel, you, you internalize it and channel it sometimes in a wrong direction, it can cause you more harm than good. And we're being able to understand and separate here versus I did something bad instead of I am bad. Like, you know what? I made a mistake. That's on me. I'm not perfect. I'm human. It's not going to happen again. We're going to learn from it. That's on me. Shame, though, you can internalize that like, man, I am bad. You know why? I'm being, I'm being serious with y'all. I, I operated out of shame when... There was a time I was a sophomore, I think. I was just trying to fight to get reps in practice, and I finally had a chance, and I messed up the drill. Coach is getting on me, yelling at me. I, I'm thinking, like, man, I'm never going to go in this drill again. I'm going to just fade in the back. I'm not going to take any reps. I'm going to just let this drill go. Yeah. I'm going to let it go. Jerry, you didn't get any reps today. Oh, yeah, you know, Coach, my ankle. You know, my ankle. I'm serious. That's shame. That's shame. Being able to identify that. Like, you know what? I'm going to stop that. I'm going to stop that pattern. I'm going to stop that in my life. I'm going to have a level of courage to act, even if I feel scared, even if I'm not so sure where this step is going to lead. I'm going to take this step, and I'm going to believe in this step, having that courage. Because sometimes the problem is not necessarily 
being aware of yourself or all these things where you, you reflect so much all the time. A lot of times it's it's loving the person you find out you are like, man, this is me. This is me. This is this is who I am. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, mixed race. My mother is white. My father was black. I struggled a lot with my identity. And where am I supposed to fit in? Do I hang out with the black kids? Do I hang out with the white kids? My mom's white, my whole family white. I don't really know my heritage like that. So who do I, who do I go with? Like, what do I wear? How do I talk? I didn't really know my story. But here's the thing, owning it, owning it. Like, you know what? This is, this is who I am. Owning it's one of the bravest things you can do. The bravest things you can do. And you heard your athletic director say it. When you look yourself in the mirror and you can truly love that person you see in the mirror, now you're really dangerous. You're really dangerous now when you're not relying on any number of likes for your validation. When you're not relying on any significant other to make you feel good. Whoo, you're dangerous now. You're dangerous now. So understanding that, where's your validation coming from? Because if it's coming from anything external, the external can be cut off real quick. But if it's coming from in here, it's coming from that, that spirit, your heart. You really believe that. You're going to be on another level. Go ahead and scroll. Is this, is this clicking? Yes, yeah, some of it, a little bit. Yeah, I know, I know it's more like a somber conversation, but seriously, this is, this is all good. Why? Because it's Cougs versus everybody. Can we make some noise for Cougs versus everybody? Like, yeah. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all gave me y'all gave me the golf clap like I just got a birdie on hole nine. Like, can we can we get cools versus everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you're a part of something, right, when you've defined success for who you are, you've defined success for what you want to get out of this experience. When you're able to manage those expectations that have been placed upon you, you work on what intentionality you get to be part of something. Now is the chance to bring somebody along with you. Now it's like, no, we're, we're rocking together. This is us together. Go ahead and scroll. Last piece here. Last piece. Why does it matter? Why does it matter? Keep going. Because, guys, like I, I shared that moment uh, about my teammate, about Vaughn, who pulled me back and said, no, you're too good of a player. These defining moments, these defining moments in our lives, a lot of times we don't even realize they're defining moments until after the fact. Until after the fact. To reflect back like, wow, like, that, was, that moment really changed me. I didn't even know it at the time, but it changed me. We don't even know it until after. So t- taking each and every day as, you know what? I'm excited for today because I don't know what's going to happen. It might be, this might be today. You, you never know. You never know. Because, guys, there's two parts to influence. First, influence is like, mm, that's powerful. Like, wow, I really feel that person. Like, they're making a change right now. But at the same time, influence is subtle. It's that slight, it's that, that extra smile. It's the extra pat on the back. It's the extra, hey, man, I got you. It's the extra, I'm here for you. It's the extra, you're worth it to me. It's subtle. It's subtle. Why? Because you would never let somebody just push you right off course. You're like, yo, what are you doing? It's a, it's, a, it's a slight nudge. Like, no, 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 I believe in you. I'm going to nudge you forward. I'm not worried about myself. I'm, I'm focused on this team. I'm going to nudge you, you forward one more step because I know you have it in you. And maybe you're like, Jared, I'm a freshman. I can't lead. Yes, you can. Why? Because the longer you wait for coach to put you in the game, the longer you're going to stand on the sideline. The opportunity is all around you, but it's up to you to seek it out. Go ahead and scroll. Keep going. Keep going. I love that picture. I got a picture by the SUV myself. It was down by the stadium. I'm like, yo, I got it. I'm right here with it. With the cool versus everybody, man. Last piece. Shout out to the volleyball team. Can we make some noise? Y'all big time, man. We was looking at your stats. Like, big time. Hey, we excited about this year, though. Excited. Love the passion here. Love the passion. I want to close with this. I want to close with this. We talked about those, those squads in the beginning, right? But I think one thing we do have to identify versus our, with, with ourselves is who are our friends and who are our real teammates? Who are our real teammates? A friend? Man, that's somebody. Y'all hang out with my friends. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we chill. We're, you know, we're hanging out, study hall, whatever, just, just hanging out. No big deal. But a teammate. A teammate, that's somebody, yo, if I'm with my teammate, I know they have my back. I know if, if I'm in trouble, that's who I'm calling. That's my teammate. That's my teammate. That's somebody, I'm not going to let you go down to that level. That's a teammate. A teammate, somebody, I got, I got to bring you up. This is, this, we're up here, man. This is, we're up here. A teammate, I'm bringing you with me. 
A teammate holds you accountable. A teammate believes in you before you may even believe in yourself. That's a teammate. A teammate, I can't, man, I can't let you do that. This is where we're trying to go. A teammate may tell you, you know what? That's not what you should be doing. You know better. A teammate. Why? Because when you were needed the most, you gave your very best. That's a teammate. That's a teammate. When I needed that person there, like, yo, I, I need you right now. I know that person's going to give their best. That's a teammate. Somebody in your corner. For you, it's identifying. First, I'm going to back up. First, it's being that person. It's being. Well, we can't talk about finding teammates until we be a teammate, right? Am I right? I got ahead of myself. That's on me. You got to be that person first. You want to find that? You want to seek that person out? We got we to gotta be that person. Maybe you're like, Jared, I don't know where to start. Be that person. Next thing you know, you'll find that person. I promise you that. Go ahead and scroll as we close, as we close. Wanted to leave you with a quote here. Wanted to leave you with a quote. One of my favorite, one of my favorite quotes from Aristotle, the philosopher uh, way back. I think, I, I don't even remember when he was around, but it was way back. Just know that, y'all. It was way back. <laughs> one, of it, one of my favorite quotes. He said, courage, courage is the first of human qualities because it is the quality that guarantees the others. Guys, it takes courage. I can get up in here and, and talk all night. Trey Juan can get up here and talk all night. Your athletic director can get up here and talk all night. But unless you have the courage to take that one step, that one step of either being a teammate, of identifying what your strengths are, of defining success for yourself, of cutting out that, that external validation you're just trying to grab at, when you have the courage to take that step all of a sudden, that second step just gets a little bit easier. And you're like, okay, yeah, I, I can do this. I can do this. And then next thing you know, you're walking. Next thing you know, you're running. Next thing you know, you're sprinting into a whole nother life. But it starts with that first step. It starts with that first step. And I wasn't planning on doing this. I wasn't planning on it, but I just, I think it's important. Why? Because it's the start of a new year. This isn't 2018, this is 2019. I want everybody to stand up real quick. Everyone stand up, stand up. This is us closing right now. We're closing. I want everyone to stand up real quick. Everyone stand up. I know it's, I know it's late. It's Tuesday night. It's, it's, it might have been a long day for you. Your back might hurt. You might have an ice pack on your back. I hear you. I've been there before. I want to leave you guys with this. I want you guys to all lock arms. Lock arms with everyone in your row. You may not know that person, but you're going to get to know them a little bit better. You're going to know them a little bit better. I want you to lock arms. I'm serious now. I'm serious now. In the back, in the back, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. Hey, guys, I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm closing. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. This is your pack. This is the 2019 Washington State University Athletic Department. This is your pack. You are here for a reason. It's not a mistake that you are here. You were chosen for this specific purpose. This specific, it's not an accident. It is not an accident you are here. It's not an accident that, that we came across the country to see you guys. It's not an accident. I want you guys to look to that person to your left, to your left, to your left, that person to your left. I want you to say, you are worth it to me. You are worth it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, some of you, some of you might have just found a new date tonight. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you got to be smooth with it. You got to be, hey, you're worth it to me. You're worth it to me. But seriously, seriously. Hey, listen up. Listen up. Listen up. I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm closing. I want you to turn to that person to your right. You're worth it to me. You're worth it to me. You're worth it to me. <laughs> listen up, listen up, listen up. I'm closing here, I'm closing. Guys, this, this matters. Each and every day matters. Each opportunity matters. You, why? Because you matter. Your life matters. It's not an accident. Sometimes it can feel like it. It can feel like it. I can relate. I can feel like, man, why am I here? This is just, oh, I don't even know what I'm doing. But I'm here to tell you, your person to your left and to your right is here to also tell you that you're worth it. You are worth investing in. You are here for a specific purpose. Go ahead and scroll. Last piece, last piece, last piece. Keep going. I don't know what happened there, but you guys grab a seat, grab a seat, grab a seat. <clears throat> you good, you good. Yeah, I appreciate that. You worth it. You worth it. Hey, as we close here, guys. As we close here, guys, I'm very serious. You know, we're intentional. We're here for a reason. This isn't just something we're coming in, sharing with you guys, and then we're out. We're, this is very much a movement of inspiring people to be their best selves, to reach their prime, 
go ahead and scroll to that last piece. If you guys take out your phones, open up your photo app, and you scan this uh, QR code, you're going to go to a link, and if you subscribe to emails, uh, we will send you every week, every week for this 2019 resources around how to be a better teammate, resources around how to lead, resources how to battle with these daily silent battles that we all face. We're very serious about this. But again, it's up to you to take advantage of that opportunity. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for your attention, for coming out tonight. Was this beneficial? It's positive? You got a little energy? We appreciate that. Can we get a go Cougs? Thank you, guys.